Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined once again by channel favorite, geneticist Razib Khan. Mr. Khan, thank you so much for coming on the show today. My pleasure, Nick. For our audience today who may not be familiar with your work, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and where they can follow you to really dive into the subjects that we all love, especially when combining DNA with history? Yeah, um, so you kind of said it right there. Uh, I am a history buff and a history nerd, but I also happen to be a geneticist. So I synthesize those two interests in a lot of my uh, public writings, and most of them you can find right now at my Substack, rezeeb.substack.com. You can find all my offerings at rezeeb.com. I write for Unheard in various other places, and also I have a blog, gnxp.com. But yeah, uh, I write a lot of things. I produce podcasts. Like no, the, the YouTube is here though, so you know. Stay here for the YouTube. And to my subscribers, definitely check out the links in the video description below. It's going to take you to all of the awesome work Mr. Khan is doing to help people like me and you better understand the past that we all love. And it's no secret, we love studying ancient DNA. We love interacting with the, you know, the top experts on these subjects and his podcast and his articles really provide that. And as someone who is actually a member of his Substack, I really can't recommend it enough. And so if you can go over there, join that community and really give him your full support. And now without further ado, today we are gonna be discussing the origins of the Scythians. Mr. Khan, when you think of the Scythians in the context of history based on your research and even your imagination, what comes to your mind? Badasses on horses, in pants, and wizard hats. <laughs> so uh, those are the things that the Scythians really, really contributed to uh, our civilization, the world civilization. Um, there are other societies that had trousers, but they really, really popularized them. And, you know, the idea of the trousered barbarian was something that they really made big in the world of classical Greece, uh, even before Rome. Uh, from their homeland in modern day Ukraine and points eastward. And then, uh, yeah, some of them, um, you know, they had like pointy hats that they wore. Uh, they kind of look like wizard hats. Uh, so, you know, I, th I think that's kind of interesting and amusing. When we look at the Scythians in the context of historiography, I have to ask what has been the traditional viewpoint as to the origins of who they were? Well, so the traditional viewpoint starts with Herodotus, the father of lies. <laughs> But um, so uh, he, his argument is the Scythians are, are from the far east, uh, in, at least in the relation to the world of Greece, to Hellas, to the Aegean. Um, so, you know, they dominated the whole zone, you know, let's say between the Danube and out towards the Volga in the Greek mine. They ravaged the Crimea. They dominated the Greek colonies around the northern edge of the Black Sea. Uh, but uh, Herodotus apparently believed that they came from further east. But beyond that, very little was known. Um, they would burst into the classical world, into the world of Iran, into Persia periodically, and then they would retreat back. And, um, you know, they were kind of a precursor to the warriors of the steppe that would come later, like the Huns and the Turks. As we approach ancient DNA and today, I've got to ask, what has modern DNA studies shown us as to who the Scythians really were and where they came from? Well, so um, one of the key things is uh, there is some diversity in the Scythians. Um, so because they occupied it, they basically occupied the Eurasian steppe. Uh, so it's cold, relatively dry. Uh, it's, it's good conditions for ancient DNA preservation. We've got a lot of ancient DNA from the Scythians. Uh, so what do we know? Um, well, uh, they're kind of homogenous. There's some outliers that are a little bit diverse. So you identify a Scythian by their cultural artifacts. Are they buried like a Scythian. And Scythians, by the way, I have to say, um, the myths of the Amazons might come from Scythian female warriors uh, who are buried like males, probably high status females. Uh, and so you get the samples from them, you sequence them, you type them, whatnot. Uh, there's a general type and there's some deviations from this type. So the general type is pretty straightforward. It is very similar to ancient Proto-Indo-Europeans uh, with some admixture from European farmers. So basically, uh, for your listeners who know about um, the early Bronze Age in Europe, uh, late Copper Age, uh, the Corded Ware people, they're related to people like that. So they're about like, let's say like three-fourths Yamnaya uh, and then one-fourth European farmer. They're out of some reflux that emerged from, say, 
you know, Western Ukraine, Eastern Poland, that area, it went eastward along the forest step boundary and then into the steppe. Now there's another 10% of the Scythian ancestry, uh, which is straight up East Asia. Okay, and this is very different than the earlier steppe nomads uh, in the uh, copper, in the Middle Bronze Age, let's say up to the Middle Bronze Age. So the Scythians are called Iron Age nomads, and there's a paper out there um, about Iron Age nomads and Scythians. And so how do you distinguish these Iron Age nomads? One consistent fact about them is they all, most of them, the vast majority, there's a minority that do not, the vast majority of Scythians tend to have this 10% or so East Asian ancestry. Okay? And so that's very distinctive of them as opposed to earlier nomads or say the Sarmatians who don't seem to have this. So the different um, cultures do have like somewhat different genetic patterns. There's some Scythians that are deviated from this, but you know, people get assimilated into ethnic groups now and then that's how the 10% East Asian came into the Scythians. So um, where did this occur? It looks like it occurred kind of where Herodotus actually said in the Altai region of Western Mongolia. And so what happened with the origin of the Scythians, I think we kind of know now. So they are descended from what is called the Andronovo horizon. These are Indo-Iranian speaking um, horse nomads or whatnot. The Scythians are clearly um, Iranian speaking. Okay, they're Iranian speaking, they have Iranian names. And so they show up in the Altai, these huge like highland pastures in the Altai region. And they mix with native people, I think the sense of the Pazaric people, don't quote me on that, but you know, there's Siberian cultures in that area. They mix with them, they absorb some of their genes, and then there's a massive shift back westward, uh, just as Herodotus said. Uh, so they refluxed across the Eurasian steppe. Uh, the furthest west they go is in Hungary, um, in the Pannonian Plains, uh, because that's where their horses uh, could be supported. Now, I said that they're horse nomads. Um, this is somewhat different. So there are arguments about when the horse was domesticated. I, I will put my cards on the table and say that I think forms of domestic horse, horse riding bareback, uh, probably are actually pretty old, um, but mounted cavalry is dates to the Iron Age. And the Scythians were among the first uh, that show up in the histories that look like this. And so the Scythians are horse nomads. They're cavalry warriors. They're mounted warriors. Uh, this is different than just riding bareback on a horse as transportation, dismounting, and then remounting. When it comes to the future of ancient DNA and the Scythians, are there any developments that you would like to see take place in the future? Well, I mean, in, in relation to the Scythians themselves, there are various groups that are called Scythians uh, in places like uh, Xinjiang in Western China, in places like India. It would be interesting to get their DNA and see if they are genetically very similar. So um, there are debates about, um, so there are groups called, I think the Sakas, uh, Indo-Scythians uh, that show up in around like 500 AD, a little earlier, 300 to 500 AD. They fight the Gupta Empire in India. And some people claim to be descended from these Scythians. Now my claim is that's unlikely because um, if you are 10% Indo-Scythian, let's just give an example, like the Jats, of Punjab claim to be Indo-Scythian in part. And they do tend to be genetically somewhat different, more uh, West Eurasian than any other uh, continental Indian population actually. Uh, that's not like Parsis who are relatively new, but they don't have any East Asian ancestry. So if everything that we know from the Eurasian steppe of the Scythians is correct, why don't the Jats have in East Asian ancestry? Like let's say they're 10%, they should be about 1%. Now that's actually detectable. That's very detectable. I can detect on my own analyses when someone is South Asian, they have 1% East Asian ancestry consistently. Uh, I don't, we don't see this. So either there are Scythians who do not have East Asian ancestry. It's not like impossible. We just need to sample more. Or it could be it's another group that uh, was confused for Scythians, uh, and another Iranian group that didn't have East Asian ancestry. So um, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions to be answered around that because the Scythians are attributed. A lot of things are attributed to the Scythians. Uh, they're not a written culture in general, and so other people write about them. So people can get confused. Sarmatians and Scythians are routinely confused, and they are very close. They're both Iranian speaking, uh, but the Sarmatians seem to have an origin in the Volga region. The Scythians had an origin in the Altai region. We've covered the origins of the Scythians, but now I want to talk about the future and possibly seeing them come back. And so for fun, as we end this episode, Mr. Khan, would you tell us about the attempts by Russian scientists to clone the Scythians? Yeah, um, so we have a lot of Scythian uh, DNA, a lot of it. Uh, and so um, I don't think this is totally serious, but 
look, they were like ancient warriors of renown. You know, some of you probably watched G.I. Joe and remember Serpentor. They cloned him from Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. So I think like we got some G.I. Joe watchers in Russia, uh, you know, you know, Gen X, Boomer, young Boomer G.I. Joe watchers. And, uh, you know, they've talked about cloning the Scythians, you know. These steppe nomads, like, I'm not going to lie, though. They were big. They were robust. Uh, they looked kind of like chads. Like, they've been reconstructed. Um, they're, they're, they're not as delicately built as most farmer people. Like, you know, people like me and you. Like, you're so delicate, Nick, you know? Um, the Scythians, they were, like, they were pretty robust people. And so uh, it's not, like, totally crazy, but it's kind of crazy. To my subscribers, don't forget, check out the links in the video description below. It's going to take you to all of the different outlets where you can support Mr. Khan and his work and help him make history matter. We can all do our part and really take advantage of all of the awesome insights that he has to offer on the subjects that we all love. Mr. Khan, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, my pleasure always, Nick.